Patrick Chandler at ptlarts.com. It's been a long time, isn't it? Anyway, I'm back and um, working on a double portrait of my grandfather and grandmother that I never actually knew um, from seeing as I'm pretty ancient, as you can tell by my bleached hair. Um, it's really black actually, but I just sort of like to uh, bleach it because I think it looks cool. Anyway, so I'm working on this picture, which I can't show you at the moment, um, from a photograph. Where I've got to is, I'm just going to do a bit of work on the background. I'm going to pick up some more paint tomorrow to start doing skin tones and stuff. Of course, I work in, I'm working from a black and white photograph from 60, 70 years ago, I guess. Um, and also it's an old photograph it pixelates when I try to drive in to get details so um, I'm just going to go gently gently with it but at the minute I've put some greens in the background they're um, a bit strong so I'm just going to spend like a little while uh, working on those greens I'm going to start doing a whole series of um, portraits uh, of different people. The first one I'm, I'm going to choose is to do a famous Scottish bloke called Rod Stewart um, later in the week. So I'll go straight right from the beginning and see what I do when I start. I don't tend to have grids, I don't do anything. The only thing I do do is I work from the center of a canvas and um, go with the flow really and that's my suggestion for anybody is just to try doing it not um, procrastinate just get paint onto canvas and get used to making that relationship don't worry about the outcome because it's not going to run away so what i want to do is these greens i'm just going to put some um, I'm just going to mix up some something to dampen them off the greens really so I'm going to put some sort of reds with them some uh, Indian red I use all like Michael Harding paint I, I like to use um, the thing is with the more expensive paint if you buy the more expensive paint it lasts longer. It's a bit like fairy liquid or the difference between fairy liquid and a really cheap washing up liquid. Um, it's simply that fairy liquid, yes, it costs more, but it lasts longer. So same in, in the sense with paint. Don't get too, too excited about expensive paint. It's just some of it and some of the pigments and some of the micro hardens really, really good. It's not excessively expensive but it's it's um but it like i say the pigment goes further and lasts a lot longer i've had this tube for quite a long time so just a little tip there so i'm just gonna um do some little touches here so i'll touch the paint over where i want to change the, the tones here i also want to this is like a roof it's like i've put what I've done is I put yellow ochre on first and then I put something on top. I'll probably put something on top of that as well so that the background doesn't overpower the front. But I won't do too much because the overall picture, the harmony, is what's important. So every time you add a colour, it's good to, let, to give it some time just to breathe, just to become part of the environment, of the picture environment and then make some judgments at another time uh, so the red and the green it sort of basically i think this picture is taken probably in the autumn time as opposed to summer i think it's a bright day i think the light's shining 
on to them so I want to have darkness in the background so I don't want the trouble is is like when you're doing a black and white photo like the the time if you like the time that we're in now which is like midsummer with this rain we've had loads of rain everything's bright green so the temptation is to put all these bright colors and lose this harmony between the subject and like the background um, so I'm, at, I'm just putting the red randomly around it I put the green on there uh, a couple of days ago and then I'm just going to get a small cloth I tend to use off cuts of my canvas just to rub my brushes on to get rid of because red is, it stains quite well I just want to get as clean of brushes I can not completely clean and then what I'm just going to do is gently rub this so I get it so dark brown there's still bits of green going to be showing through but it's not going to be overpowering spread this uh, into this essentially it's like a roof or a building um, in the black and white photo that I'm using you can't really see it but I, I know there's most probably some buildings behind where they're standing I'm not quite exactly sure where they are they're standing by this car which will gradually come out of the painting I don't want to rush it you can see it's got this like uh, feel but what I'm after here is more of a darkness so when I come I'm buying some more paints with these fresh tones tomorrow they'll come out of the painting the people that my, my grandparents will come alive which I have to a degree already and I can start to really put some personality into the painting uh, making it exciting so that's the thing really it's all about relation I mean obviously these are my relations but it's all about relationship with your subject whatever you're painting whether it's a portrait landscape whatever it is that's what it's about it's about this relationship so the red you can see it's beginning to work much better it's much better it's got rid of this bright green it wasn't the, the, bright, the bright but I want the green to still be there so I, I, don't, I don't want to get rid of it completely but um, you can see it's worked really well there I need a little bit more there I've got some um, on my palette, little palette down there, little workbench. It's working really well. So again, over here, I can just. The great thing is you can mix on the canvas, start to move the paint around. So there's a congruency in the whole image. Uh, the congruency. You've got these colours here. These colours here. You put them on the brush get the energy over here just get this feeling of having a bit more definition and the shape of the top of the head of the top of the car and then it's really really starts to be exciting straight away it's starting to have a different feel and um, like all these dark places here are, are going to gradually I'll put more and more dark colours onto here, I'm going to get some ivory black and put it in with the uh, yeah, just get some purples and blacks going in there it's not quite dark enough yet uh, pick up a little bit of this red here as well so there we are right, just see if I can make this part of the car, this is just a shadow of the car, just make it just a little bit darker it has an impact, it just has an impact straight away and I can start to see where I'm going to work my flesh turns here and gradually begin to define, I'm still finding the shape of the, the shape here of the leg, just put some more dark paint on there and then I can leave it and come back to it and make new fresh decisions so basically I want this as a shadow on the car the shadow of his leg on the car I'm just putting some more dark paint there I can come back tomorrow 
have a look, in daylight, in fresh daylight, it's like it's the evening now, so I know it looks really bright in my windows because it's midsummer's. well it's not, it's the solstice, 21st isn't it, it's the longest day, but it's not actually as bright as it looks <laughs> through the windows. Um, I've got my li lights on, my overhead lights, uh, so a bit more, see the dark? The darkness here, which I've mixed up on my palette, down the side of... I'm, I'm always looking at the original photograph for kind of reference, but I'm not trying to recreate it exactly as it is, because what I'm, I'm looking for is a painting, not a photograph. The photograph's got it in itself, but I want to get the character of my grandparents which of course the connection is through my parents, through my family and everything, the tendencies we have, etc, etc, and the looks too, so we can see similarities in myself, in, in my family, within this, uh, this picture. So, darkens it up a bit, it's nothing drastic, because I'm actually really quite liking the way it's going. So a bit more dark there, a bit more dark there. And already it's just given a bit more definition as to where he's standing, where his leg is, this space between them, this the space that there is between them, the fact that they're kind of interlocked here. I haven't really defined this here on the arm because I'm still it's a rich part of the relationship. It's not something that is definitive. It's not something easily defined. As you can see, it's starting to take really great shape with these darks, concentrating on these darks, the effects it has on the trouser leg, this bit, the gap between them, these dark bits here makes this building and putting it the red in with the yellow ochre on this building and this building here you get a real sense of a building so there's more like possibilities here I'm not really sure like on the photograph there's lots of leaves and stuff here loads of leaves um, but I'm kind of thinking once I've that I can be creative with it in other words, I can like have sky colours and blues, which may well be really effective, really effective with the overall image. So there we have it. Welcome back to PeterArts.com. Hope you enjoy the video. Please subscribe on the button that everybody tells you to do. But just keep watching, okay? See you soon.